What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am back for my New Japan Pro Wrestling New Beginning in Osaka 2018 predictions. Now, New Beginning in Osaka is the next New Japan Pro Wrestling pay-per-view, and it happens this Saturday morning live on NewJapanWorld.com from Osaka in Tokyo, Japan. Now, this show has been sold out. Now, here's a dangerous fact. This show sold out without any members of Bullet Club. So this card is no Bullet Clubs on this card. So this is making some history. So the only member, the only person that's going to be representing Bullet Club on this uh, in this video will be me, JT Dangerously. Now on this card we have nine big matches and three IWGP titles on the line with a chance with a chance for Los Encarnados that upon to hold all the gold. So. I'm very excited to do these predictions, and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, our record coming into New Beginning in Osaka after our last New Japan Pro Wrestling pay-per-view, which was New Beginning in Shapiro Night 1 and Night 2, we went at combined 9 and 9. So our overall record coming in is 96, 61, and 1. So we are still waiting for our elusive 100, uh, 100 wins in New Japan Pro Wrestling pay-per-views this year. We went 9-9, nine and nine, which is not too bad. It's not a winning record. It's not a losing record. It's a 500 record. We went 6-3 and three in night 1 in Shapiro after that, uh, that which night 1 was amazing with the, the main event. The IC title matchup was just physical as usual with Minoru Suzuki and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Then we got to night 2 and the wheels just fell off. We went 3-6. and six, But the biggest stuff happened in night 2 coming from me. I mean, you have Kenny Omega kicked out of Bullet Club by Cody, which again, Cody, you'll never be the leader that Kenny Omega has been for Bullet Club. And we also saw the reunion of the Golden Lovers. Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega hugging after that show ended. Amazing. Uh, easily one of those big time moments you're going to remember forever so hopefully uh, we're on a one paper we're on pay-per-view losing streak so hopefully in these in this osaka predictions i will get back on the winning track and have a winning record hopefully now before i begin i do want to thank you guys so very much for watching all the videos in the month of january again thank you guys so very much for the overwhelming success january was on the channel with all of my playoff predictions my Royal Rumble predictions, my NXT TakeOver predictions, and my new uh, new beginning in Shapiro predictions. Thank you guys so very much for showing your love on those, on all of those videos, showing your love by watching the video, super kicking that like button, and voicing your opinions in the comment section. Now, we're in the month of February, so hopefully all the stuff you guys did in January will continue into the month of February. Now we are at 280 plus subscribers now on the channel, so I do want to thank you guys so very much for supporting the channel. To new subscribers, thank you guys for super kicking that subscribe button and welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. It is great to have you guys here. And to my longtime subscribers, thank you guys for sticking around, supporting the channel, and as always, killing it. Now, this is your first time watching my channel as a first time viewer, and this is your first video. Boy, you picked a good one if you're a New Japan Pro Wrestling fan like myself. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I am JT Dangerously, and welcome to the club, because this club is... Just to whoop, whoop. again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, let's get right into these predictions. Now, if they do add any other matches or any any replacements uh, for some of the wrestlers happen, I'll have them in the comment section down below. But I'm gonna do the nine matches that are already confirmed. Now, let's start off with the first matchup. It is the Kitamura Challenge Series featuring the 2017 Young Lions Cup champion, the genetically jacked. Katsuya Kitamura facing one of my all-time favorites in New Japan Pro Wrestling, an icon in this business. He is Blue Justice, Yuji Nagata. Now, coming from me, this is definitely teacher versus student. The teacher being Nagata, the, the student being Katsuya Kitamura. Now, Kitamura has been going through some of the best, some of the best heavyweights in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's faced guys like Jay White, Juice Robinson, Michael Elgin. And now he's uh, and he's he's had some good matches. I know he hasn't he did not win those matches, but it's a learning thing to see if he can hang with the big boys in in the heavyweight division in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And if you've seen this guy, this guy is this guy is absolutely what Vince McMahon looks in a wrestler. Just somebody who looks really strong and jacked. So this guy, uh, so Kenemura definitely has a tough task to face against his teacher. Then on the other side, you have Yuji Nagata, who, again, is an icon in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Known for his kicks, his Saito suplexes, his, uh, his arm ball, roll, uh, his arm bar, his, his, um, his disarmor. I like to call it his disarmor. And then he rolls his eyes in the back of his head. It's just something to see if you've been a New Japan fan like myself. It's awesome. And this is... This is this is very interesting because Yuji Nagata tra trained Katsuya Kitamura, trained all the young lions like Tomoyuki Oka 
and Shota Imino and Kawada, who's in who's doing his excursion in Mexico now. So this is a big time matchup. So coming from me in this teacher versus student uh, challenge matchup, man, this one's tough. I'm gonna go with the teacher Yuji Nagata to defeat Katsuya Kitamura. And now the next matchup, a tag team matchup that could turn into an IWGP Junior Tag Team Championship matchup. Featuring first, they are representing Suzuki Gun Ichiban. They are consisting of the Whiskey Man, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and the mass member of Suzuki Goon, El Desperado. And they are facing now, they are the reigning and two-time IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions, accompanied by their uh, manager, Rocky Romero. They are Sho and Yo, Rapungi 3K. Now, again, this match could turn into a Junior Tag Team title match with the with Rapungi 3K winning the belt over the Young Bucks in Shapiro on, uh, on, in Night 2, winning back the titles that they lost at Wrestle Kingdom. This could definitely turn into a Tag Team title matchup. Now, starting off with Suzuki Gun, Kanemaru, former Junior Tag Team Champion, Desperado, like really athletic, especially with his legs, uh, and with Suzuki Gun, you know it's not going to be one on one, which is that's that's a that's a nor in New Japan when it comes to Suzuki Gun. It's never one on one. You know there's going to be members of Suzuki Gun helping out their brothers in Kanemaru and Desperado. Then on the other side, you have Rapunky 3K, who once again regained the belts by defeating the then seven time IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks and Shapiro. Nobody saw that coming. I don't think, and not even Callis. Don Callis was just apoplectic when he lo they lost the belts. So so was I because I had the Young Bucks winning that match. But Rapungi 3K found a way to win. Now they are two time IWGP Junior Tag Team Champions, and with Rocky Romero managing them, they're doing pretty well so far. And 2018 is going to be a good year for them. So coming from me in this tag team match that could be a Junior Tag Team Title matchup, I'm going to go with Rapungi 3K to defeat. Suzuki Goon. And now the next matchup. It is an eight man tag team battle featuring members of Taguchi Japan and Suzuki Gun. Starting off with Taguchi Japan. Now this could be a, this could be changed right here because the first guy I was going to talk about was Hiroshi Tanahashi. But with the injury he sustained against Minoru Suzuki in Shapiro uh, in night one of in, in Shapiro, does not look like he's going to be in this matchup. So. Uh, I don't know who's going to replace him. It could be Hanare again. So, But the, the next member, he is the former IWGP Heavyweight Champion. He is the Unchained Gorilla, Makabe Togi. Next, he is the former five-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. He is Time Splitter Kushida. And, and finally, the captain of Taguchi Japan, uh, the former IWGP Junior Tag Team Champion, Junior Heavyweight Champion, he is Taguchi Ryusuke. And they are facing, they are all representing Suzuki Gun Ichiban, consisting of Taka Michinoku, Taichi, hopefully with Miho Abe, his, his chick, the madman Takahashi Iizuka, and the new IWGP Intercontinental Champion, the sadist of Suzuki Gun, he's one of my all-time favorites, Minoru Suzuki. Now, uh, what happened in Shapiro with Minoru Suzuki becoming the brand new Intercontinental Champion did two things for me. One, Suzuki can win without Suzuki Gun's help. And two, he can be the baddest SOB. He will work on a body part like no other. And he's going to be a tough person to take that title away from because if he's got the Suzuki guns uh, backing him, he's going to be near impossible to defeat. And, and you saw how long his never open weight title run was. He's going to be a big time. He's going to be a long time champion in Suzuki as the IC champion. I mean, you got you got Tai Chi, Taka, Iizuka. So Suzuki guns got a good team right here. And then on the other side, you have Taguchi Japan, in which uh, in night two in Shapiro, Makabe looks like it's going to be. Makabe and Minoru Suzuki for the IC title, which could be very interesting. The Unchained Gorilla against the Sadis. You have Kushida, you have Taguchi, and then if it uh, does not look like Tanahashi is going to make this matchup. So it's going to be either Hanare or a, a um, Young Lion. So coming from me in this eight-man tag team matchup, ah, man, this one's really tough. I'm going to go, ah, man, this one's really tough. I'm going to go with Suzuki Goon to defeat 
Taguchi Japan in this eight-man tag team matchup. And now the next matchup. It is a six-man tag team battle featuring Taguchi Japan versus Chaos. Starting off with Taguchi Japan, they are the fourth generation of Finley. He is David Finley. He's uh, he's uh, next. He's one of my all-time favorites in New Japan Pro Wrestling and a rising star in 2018. Juice Robinson and the final member of this team. He is the former IWGP Intercontinental Champion and the former Ring of Honor wor uh, World Champion. He is unbreakable. Ah, uh, Michael Elkin or Big Mike. And they are challenging. They are all representing chaos. They are first. They are the former IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. He is the Stone Pitbull Tomohiro Ishii and the Sublime Master Thief Toriyanu. And their partner is the brand new IWGP United States Champion. He is Switchblade Jay White. Now, this six-man tag team matchup could definitely see some possibilities on who's going to challenge Jay White for the United States title. Now, starting off on one side, you have Mike Logan, who defeated Katsuya Kitamura in Shapiro on night two. Definitely, he's going to he's got to have a better year. 2017 was just not his year for in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So 2018 definitely is going to be Big Mike's year. Then, then you have Juice Robinson, who defeated. Um, Katsuya Kitamura in night uh, uh, night one, Elgin beat Kitamura, uh, Kitamura. Night two, Juice beat Kitamura in Shapiro. So Juice Robinson, another guy who had one hell of a great 2017. He beat Naito. He beat Kenny Omega in the G, in the G1. He main evented two matches against Naito and Kenny Omega. So Juice Robinson's going to have a great 2018. I could see him definitely being in the New Japan Cup. Same thing with David Finley. Fourth generation. I think he'd be a sleeper pick to win the uh, New Japan Cup in 2018. Then on the other side, you have Ishii and Yano, again, representing Chaos. Um, Yano and Ishii is just so much of an odd pairing because Yano is all about the, all about the uh, you know, find any way to win. You unwrap the turnbuckle, use low blows, use some crazy tactics to win, but I like it. Ishii being just a stone pit bull, like just... Doesn't take nothing from nobody. I mean, if you've seen his matches in 2017, he was doing, he was just taking every kind of bump, and he still got up and got it done. And then you have Jay White. I mean, this was the biggest shock in Shapiro in night two. Jay White beating Kenny Omega to become the, only the second United States champion. And Jay White representing Chaos, he has said multiple times that, hey, I'm gonna, hey, look out Okada. Even if I'm in, like, he's in Chaos just. To um, stir the pot. I mean, he's saying that I want to challenge Okada even though I'm in chaos. Jay White is all about Jay White. He doesn't care about being in a group. He's all about making, uh, getting a winning belt and winning matches. He's not all about being on a team. You saw that when, he, uh, when Kenny tried to introduce him to Bullet Club. Did not work. This is going to happen the same way. So coming from me in this six-man tag team matchup... I'm going to go with the team of Jay White, Tomohiro Ishii, and Toriyanu to defeat Michael Elgin, Juice Robinson, and David Finley. And now the next matchup. It is a singles match featuring Okada's Rainmaker, Raintaker, or what he likes to call the Playmaker, Gato, facing he is representing Los Encarnados de Alpone. He is the mass luchador himself. MX Bushi. Now, this one's a very interesting singles matchup. This is uh, the next four matches after this are Chaos versus Los Encarnados de Alpone. So, this is the first of three other matches between Chaos and LIJ. Now, Gato being the playmaker and the manager of the IWGP heavyweight champion Kazuchika Okada, he's looking to get a big time win as a single star. Then on the other side, you have Bushi, the mask man. Never, never underestimate somebody like him with his MX and the mist. Definitely is going to be a big, uh, good matchup. So coming from me in this first single, this huge singles matchup between Chaos and Los Encarnados de Alpone. Man, this one's tough. I'm going to take Bushi to defeat the playmaker, Gato. And now the next matchup, another singles matchup featuring members of Chaos versus Los Encarnados de Alpon. Starting off with the, uh, the, the uh, starting off with the member from Chaos. He is 
he is looking to make another impact in, in another big time matchup in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is the headhunter himself, Yoshihashi or Tacos. And he is facing the leader of Los Encarnadores de Apone. And he is one of my all time favorites. And he fell short in winning the IWGP Heavyweight title at Wrestle Kingdom 12. A lot of people did not see that coming, including myself. If you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Tetsuya Naito. Now, this whole thing started, I think, during a, like a post-match interview with Yoshihashi saying that Naito didn't want, didn't like, uh, didn't want to, uh, didn't deserve to be in that main event spot and all that. And then Naito saying that Yoshihashi is not even in my league. I'm looking past him because his his goal is being the IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Now, starting off with Yoshihashi, I mean. This guy, this this guy has been in some good matches. I mean, he's faced Naito before in the G1. He's faced he's faced him for the I think for the briefcase for the uh, for the G1. He's faced him before. But Yoshiashi's problem is that he always loses those big time matches. He shows up. He has these kind of 25, 30 plus minute matches, and he always loses. I mean, his last big win, and let's just be honest, folks, was against Kenny Omega in the G1 climax like years ago. So Yoshashi's looking to get a big win in 2018 and knock off the leader of LIJ. Then on the other side, you have Tetsuya Naito again, who's coming off that just an embarrassing loss to Kazuchika Okada in the main event of Wrestle Kingdom 12, where he had Okada beat. After the third Destino, it was over. I was thinking to myself, Okada will lose this belt with three Destinos. Naito hits him with the third one. He didn't pin him. He got too calm. He got too overconfident and tried to go for a fourth Destino and got caught with the Tombstone and the Rainmaker. So Naito lost, squandered an opportunity. Now G1 Climax winners are now 0 and 5 against the heavyweight champions going into Wrestle Kingdom. So the streak continues. But Naito is definitely looking to. De, Naito is definitely looking past Yoshihashi. It seems like he is. I mean, uh, during the Shapiro shows, Yoshihashi attacked Naito. They. Uh, on night one and night two, so Yoshihashi has the fire, but it seems like Naito doesn't give a shit because it's all about that tran tranquilo hacienda, y'all. Just that's Naito's mo. And with maybe him and with Naito maybe be facing Chris Jericho at uh, Strong Style Evolved in Long Beach, maybe this could be a big time match that we could see Jericho just out of nowhere. So coming from me in this huge singles matchup. I'm going to go with Tetsuya Naito to defeat Yoshihashi. And now the next matchup, and this is the one I've been waiting to predict. This is for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, starting off with the challenger. He is representing Los Encarnadores de Apone, and he's looking to become, once again, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. He is one of my all-time favorites, Ticking Time Bomb! Hiromu Takahashi, and he is challenging, representing Chaos. He is the reigning and defending IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. He is by far one of my all-time favorites in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He is the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay. Now, this match, I got a good feeling this one's going to be match of, the, match of the night, for sure. Now, now, this whole thing started at New Year's Dash after the 10-man tag team matchup between Chaos and LIJ in which the LIJ members wanted to make an impact on their future challengers, starting with Hiromu hitting Osprey with the time bomb and then challenging him for the junior heavyweight title. Now, Hiromu's last reign as the IWGP junior heavyweight champion was at Dominion, which was in June of 2017, his last run as the IWGP junior heavyweight title. He has not got a one-on-one -on -one match against the junior heavyweight champion since he was the champion in June. So this is a huge opportunity for Hiromu and also to bring more gold to LIJ. 
Then on the other side, you have Will Ospreay, who regained the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title in a classic four-way matchup at Wrestle Kingdom 10, uh, 12 against Marty Skrull, Kushida, and Hiromu Takahashi. Now, this is his second title defense since winning it for the second time. We all remember how his first title defense lasted. It only lasted until Skrull beat him. But this is a big-time opportunity for Will Ospreay. I've said it again. I've said it time and again. Will Ospreay is the most physically gifted wrestler in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Every time you watch one of his any of his matches, your jaw drops because of what crazy thing he does. And this match is going to be no different. So coming from me in this highly anticipated matchup for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Oh man, this one's so tough because I love Hiromu, but I, I absolutely love Will Ospreay. I really do think he will be in uh, this year's G1. I really hope so, or the New Japan Cup. So coming from me, oh man, this one's really tough, guys. I'm going to go with the aerial assassin, Will Ospreay, to retain his IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship and defeat Hiromu Takahashi. And now the next matchup. It is for the IWGP Never Open Weight Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is also representing Los Encarnados de Apone, And he is one half of the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions with Sonata. He is one of my all-time favorites and I love doing this. King of Darkness Evil. Because this is evil. Everything is evil. Sumidewa! Evil Da! And he is challenging the reigning and defending and 17th IWGP Never Open Weight Champion. He is representing Chaos once again. He is the modern day warrior, Hiroki Goto. Now, this whole thing started at the same New Year's Dash in which Evil attacked Hir uh, Hiroki Goto with Everything is Evil and then challenged him for the Never Open Weight title in the post match interview. Now, Evil has been the IWGP Never Open Weight champion before. He was a champion, I think, in 2013, but his title reign was less than five day, uh, less than uh, 15 days. He only held the title for 10 days and then lost the title to the, uh, the then uh, Never Open Weight champion Katsuyori Shibata. So, this is Evil's one uh, chance to regain the belt that he thinks is uh, deserves to be his after his only 10-day reign as champion. But Evil's had one hell of a 2017. I mean, he's beat Okada in the G1 Climax. He faced Okada in the uh, in the main event at King of Pro Wrestling in October. He he won World Tag League with his partner Sonata and won the IWGP Tag Team titles from the Killer Elite Squad at Wrestle Kingdom 12. Evil's having one hell of a year, and 2018 is going to be his year because when everything is evil, everything is good. Then on the other side, you have Hiroki Goto, who won back the IWGP Never Open Weight title in a physical war with Minoru Suzuki at Wrestle Kingdom 12, putting his hair on the line and got it uh, and won back the uh, the Never Open Weight title. Now Hiroki Goto has been through it all. I mean, he went through Suzuki. And now he's going against King of Darkness Evil. And Goto's, Goto has been a pretty solid IWGP Never Open Weight Champion in the past. He's been he's taken on guys like Shibata and just na uh, names to, like uh, names uh, throughout New Japan Pro Wrestling. So this is a big time. This is his first title defense since winning the belt. So this is a big time opportunity for him. So coming from me in this IWGP Never Open Weight Championship matchup. Oh, man, this one's really tough because again, I love evil. I love the the whole the whole everything is evil. I just love it. And then I love Goto just because of his his toughness, his Yugi Kuroshi, and his GTR, his finisher. So coming from me, I'm gonna take Hiroki Goto to de to retain his IWGP Never Open Weight Championship and defeat King of Darkness Evil. And now the main event for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Starting off with the challenger. He is representing Los Encarnados de Apone as well. And he is one half of the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions with Evil. He is Cold Skull Sonata. And Sonata is challenging the 65th and reigning and longest reigning IWGP 
heavyweight champion. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. Now, this whole thing happened. Uh, this whole thing, this whole match came to be at New Year's Dash uh, after the uh, Los Angeles de Apone and Chaos Ten Man Tag, in which everybody, like uh, everyone from Evil to Bushi to Hiromu, attacked their future opponents. In which there was only one man left, and that was Okada. Everybody was thinking Naito was going to be the one that's going to make his statement, but. He gave, he gave Okada to Sonata in which Sonata hit him with the TKO and put him to sleep with the skull end. Now, these two have history, Sonata and Okada. If you remember three, um, think, uh, two years ago in 2016 at Invasion Attack, Naito was challenging the then IWGP champion Kazuchika Okada in which Sonata came out, cost Okada, the IWGP heavyweight title, and joined Los Encarnados de Apone, and Naito won the belt from Okada. So, it's been brewing for two years. Now, starting off with Sonata, he's had a very interesting 2017. I mean, he's he had a pretty solid G1 climax. He won World Tag League with Evil, and he also won the IWGP tag team titles over the Killer Elite Squad. But Sonata is maybe the most God-gifted God -gifted wrestler in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I mean, with his insane vertical leap I have heard on, from Don Callis and Kevin Kelly, his vertical leap is out of this world. His skull end, his Muda moonsault from his, from his teacher, the great Muda. Sonata had a huge opportunity here, and he can be the, he can be, he can do something that Naito couldn't even do and win the IWGP heavyweight title from Okada. Then on the other side, you have a, a Kazuchika Okada, the reigning champ, who found a way to win at Wrestle Kingdom 12. Nobody, and I repeat, nobody had Okada win in that matchup, including myself. I had Naito all the way, but with Naito's overconfidence and going for Destino for the fourth time, Okada took full advantage of it and, and retained the title, which a lot of people did not expect. Now, let me just make this bold prediction right now. I am boldly predicting... Kazuchika Okada will no longer be the IWGP heavyweight champion this year. There's no way he's going to hold this title for another year. He's going to lose it in 2018. I'm boldly predicting that. I don't know who, but as soon as I know who it is, if it's either Naito or Kenny Omega or, hell, Kota Ibushi, Okada will lose the IWGP heavyweight title this year year. There's no way he's keeping this belt for another year. That's my bold prediction. And Okada has been has been, you know, trying to get Sonata to talk. He he attacked Sonata out of nowhere in night one and and put him out with his new Cobra Clutch uh, Cobra Clutch submission and also put his Okada bucks down Sonata's throat. So that was a kind of a different Okada we saw there in night one. Night two, different story with Sonata trying uh, Sonata not talking still and just walking out. Actions speak louder than words. So coming from me in this huge matchup for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, again, I'm going to say it again, Okada will lose the IWGP title this year. Do I see it happening here? No, but it will be very close. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada to retain his IWGP Heavyweight Championship and defeat Sonata. And those are my New Japan Pro Wrestling New Beginning in Osaka 2018 predictions. I hope you guys did enjoy these predictions today. Comment below, who do you have winning all these matchups? Who do you have between Goto and King of Darkness Evil? Who do you have between Hiromu and Will Ospreay? Who do you have between Naito and uh, Yoshiashi? And who do you have between Okada and Sonata? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I am always on to see your comment, like it, and of course, reply right back to you. Because comments are absolutely always welcome on this channel. Now, I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Now, before you guys go, you can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share with your friends. Of course, super kick! That like button like only you guys can. Of course, you can never forget to do this as well. 
that subscribe button to become part of this bigger and dangerous Dangerous Lions. And I will see you guys in two weeks on February 19th for my official New Japan Pro Wrestling and Ring of Honors Honor Rising Japan Night 1 and Night 2 predictions and my official Elimination Chamber 2018 predictions. Later days and peace.